Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reform Presbyterian Church as we gather together here on Monday morning to head back into the book of Hebrews. And while it may seem as if the apostle is somewhat repeating himself, it's important for us to see the fullness of the sacrifice of Christ. And so as we look more deeply into this matter, we go to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. So as we prepare uh, for this time, let us go to God and ask not only his help, uh, but for his grace in the reading of his word. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are the great and the almighty. And as we come to read uh, these scriptures, which you have mercifully provided to your covenant people and to all the world, that every man under heaven may know of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the satisfaction that he has offered for sin, and to see the beauty of the cross, and of the empty tomb, and of the ascension, and all that goes into making Christ the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great high priest, that great prophet, and the answer to all of our needs. May our hope and our peace and comfort always be in this great and wonderful work which we have received by faith alone. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this morning we turn again to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Amen. Now, like I said, it may seem as if Paul is in some way just going over the same old ground. But there's a few reasons why he is committed to making clear the way that sin is forgiven in the new covenant. First of all, because fundamentally, it is the same with the way that it was forgiven in the Old Covenant. Never did the blood of goats and sheep and heifers take away sins. Always the means of our forgiveness is our calling out unto God and His receiving those sacrifices of praise and through the promise, forgiving us of our transgressions. Now, what has changed between the Old and New Covenant is the, the means by which that takes place. Yes, in the Old Covenant, it was required that sacrifices of animals be made for sin. Yet, we hear in Hebrews 10 that this daily ministering this offering repeatedly the same sacrifices is not only unnecessary, but it actually goes against what Christ has accomplished at the cross. For that work is a one-time expiation taking away of the requirements of the law. And so there needs no more to be blood sacrifice for the one blood sacrifice has been made in Jesus Christ. And so, what do we receive in this work? First of all, we receive the assurance that our sins are forgiven. If you sin against God, you have an advocate. You have a mediator, Jesus Christ the righteous. You don't have to go to the priest. You don't have to come to me. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. You don't have to kill an animal. All you have to do is call out to your Savior. For he intercedes on our behalf daily. 
That's why there's no longer a need for a fallen human being to offer up these sacrifices because the perfect one, the Lord Jesus Christ, has done it once and for all. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Now, another thing that we notice here in this passage that is very important for us to pay attention to is the way that the apostle understands the authority of the Old Testament. He quotes here from Jeremiah 31. And in so doing, notice who he says is speaking. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before. So again, we need to recall that the entirety of the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, is the very word of the living God. It is perfect, without error, and without challenge, because it comes from the Godhead. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, is as much God as the Father and the Son. And so when the Holy Spirit is is said to speak, we are duty-bound to listen. But we're not just duty-bound to listen. We're duty-bound to worship at what has been revealed. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and their minds. I'll write them. Now, as we've noted before about Jeremiah 31, this doesn't mean that before Christ came and inaugurated this new covenant, that the law was not written on the hearts. You see, one of the things that's being testified here is the way the work of the illumination of the Holy Spirit is improved upon, if you want to use that kind of language, in the new covenant. It's one of the benefits of Christ going away, is that he ascends into the heavenly places, where, as we hear in he, in this passage, he is waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. Now, Jesus is not inactive in this work. He's not sitting in heaven twiddling his thumbs until all the work gets done, but he is engaged in putting all his enemies under his footstool. And one of the ways we see that accomplished is when men and women come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, when they seek forgiveness of their sins in the only manner that is available to them, which is faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ, pleading unto heaven and hearing the words of testimony that they have been received into the kingdom of God. And so if you are seeking a sacrifice for your sin, then you are missing the bounty and the beauty of the gospel. For those things have passed away. We are not Jews in the sense that we do not follow Jewish rites and customs. It is not okay for us to believe that we gain holiness through keeping kosher or uh, from observing the feast days and the fast days of the Old Covenant. All of these things are done away with in Christ. We are freed from the ceremonial law. Not that the ceremonial law was bad, but that the ceremonial law has fulfilled its purpose in Jesus Christ. And so, as we continue to read here in the book of Hebrews, as I noted, it can seem as if Paul is repeating himself. But remember, who is he writing to? He's writing mainly to men and women who have lived their entire life under the Jewish system. And it's going to take a, a few mentions to help them to see why it is the new covenant is to be prefer- preferred before the Old Covenant. For in the New Covenant, we have the fullness of the promise. The veil has been torn in two. Our eyes have been opened to see the light. And so let us be thankful for the light. And brothers and sisters, remember, when you sin as you will, as I do, what is our hope? Is that we are not cast out, we are not forsaken, for we go unto our Savior. We call unto his name. We receive the assurance of forgiveness of sin and the knowledge that those sins have been paid for by the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary, never to be repeated, for it accomplished what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
set out for it to do. We have been made new creatures, given new life, and our sanctification is guaranteed because the promise is not in us, but in our Savior. May the Lord bless you today. May he watch over you, and may you be encouraged in these truths. And in Christ's name, take care, and God bless.